Hey guys, welcome back to Strelok's Java Tutorials with BlueJay. Today we're talking about classes. Sorry, I haven't been around for a while, but real life got in the way. So, today we're talking about classes, and hopefully I'll do this with you guys in five minutes. So we have five points to cover today. And the first one is, what are classes? So a class is like a blueprint for an object or an idea in real life. For example, uh, fraction mathematical ideas, fractions, matrices, vectors, etc. can be represented as classes, as can physical objects, dog, human, pretty much anything that you really want can be represented with a class. And a class is a group of uh, variables in, uh, together with methods that operate on those variables. Methods are just fancy names for functions that operate on the class. So the class contains data and functions that manipulate that data. Okay, so now that we know what a class is, um, variables and methods, they can be of two types. They can be private to the class or public. Public means they're open to everything in the program. Private there uh, means they're only private to the class itself. There's also protected, but we won't talk about that now. We'll talk about it when we need it. So private and public. Uh, and the variables and uh, variables can be of any type, any d previously defined type, or another class. You can have a class as a variable inside a class, and you can define a class inside of another class. Um, that's all possible. So let's go right ahead and make our first class. And our first class is going to be called fraction because I felt like it. So we're just going to type out here class fraction. And this is pretty much all you need to make a class. When you type in class fraction and then you compile, it um, there is no syntax error. So that's all you need to make a class. Now, I in general, we would want, if we are making a fraction, we want, as we said before, variables and methods that operate on this fraction. So today, since I'm trying to keep this tutorial short, We'll just uh, our uh, variables are going to be uh, num, which represents the numerator of a fraction, and denum, which represents the denominator, and they're going to be private to the class, which means nothing else can access them except for this class. So, and then we have a constructor. It's um, it's going to be a public constructor, and it's just a function that in that initializes a copy of the fraction class, a specific fraction. So we pass uh, two numbers, int n and int uh, d, for the numerator and denominator, and all we do here is we we initialize the variables. So this is simply a reference to the current the class that we're in. And then, so we can reference variables inside the class using this notation: this dot uh, with the dot, and then num, and then set it equal to the variable, the parameter passed to this constructor. Um, dnum, or let's call it dnum, equals d. Right. So here's our constructor, and we have ourselves a class. So now we can compile it. No syntax errors and we can make ourselves a fraction. We can make ourselves a fraction two-fifths, for example, and we have a fraction, and so far we have no, no methods, so except for the, the ones inherited from the default class. So that's okay. We can remove our fraction, and let's make a method that does something. In fact, let's make a method called toString. It's gonna return a string, and it's gonna convert the f fraction that we have to a string. And how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to just say string value, fraction value, equals uh, the numerator, so this dot numerator, plus this, oh, sorry, plus this little string, which is the, the fraction bar, plus this dot denom, the denominator. And then we simply return value. We can actually skip this sentence and say just return this dot num plus this slash plus this dot denom, and we will get the same exact result. So this will return a string that contains the value of our function. So now we can compile it. It should work. Uh, and again, this is the numerator, the denominator. Let's test our little fraction. Make a fraction called 
uh, let's make 13, uh, no, 5 thirteenths. And then here we call the string to string object, and the return value is 5 over 13. So it returned it as a string. So it did what we wanted to, and perfect. So now one more thing before we leave is I'm going to show you how to init instantiate a um, copy of a fraction inside of the main function. So you remember how we had the main function here, um, and we had the string array args, uh, as always, as with all main functions. And here we we want to in initialize a fraction. So to initialize a fraction, we just say fraction f equals new. This is the critical point. New new creates a new object. F becomes a reference. It's not the object. It's a reference to the newly created object. And we can go more in depth into this on how it gets created and how the stack versus the heap later. But don't worry about that now. It it's a reference to this new fraction object that is created and we need to pass two parameters so let's say 513 uh, which are the parameters for the fraction and so now f is our new fraction so for example we can't access f.num or f.dnum because those are private but we can access all the public things of f so we can say system.out.println which prints a line of f dot to string, right? Now let's just test this. This is going to be our last thing we do with fractions for this video, and we call the main function with no arguments. We call the main function, and we get a string value of the our uh, fraction f printed out to the terminal window, which is exactly what we wanted. So. I hope this little introduction was not too difficult and you could follow it without uh, too much troubles and next time we'll go into some more useful uses of fractions uh, of not fractions classes I mean and um, hopefully you'll come back next time sorry it ended up being a little on the long side but okay see you next time take care Straylock signing off